For our digital project, we analyzed the documentary Life Running Out of Control, directed and produced by Bertram Verhag, produced by Michael Morales, and the score composed by Michael Bauer. The documentary was screened in 2004 for environmental film festivals in a multitude of countries, including Germany, Canada, and India, and was nominated for the Per Lorenz Award by the International Documentary Association. However, the bio biotechnology corporation Monsanto attempted to prevent the syndication of the program on multiple occasions because they feared uh, the documentary's portrayal of them would harm their public image. Life Running Out of Control focuses on the harmful effects and malpractices of genetic modification. Genetic modification is the process of inserting an organism's DNA into another organism, usually in hopes of enhancing the target organism. Big biotechnology corporations have researched genetic modification mainly on crops, but other entities, such as the universities and the government, have examined the effects of genetic engineering on animals. The aim of the documentary was to enlighten the audience with the lesser and darker known facts about genetic engineering. The documentary's aim was to persuade others to share the same viewpoint as the filmmakers. The rhetorical dimension was directed to those who believe that genetic engineering may have been a positive thing to the world and to those who were uninformed about the subject. The documentary makes use of logos, ethos, and pathos to effectively persuade the audience to adopt the filmmakers' views. It is clear that the filmmakers had a bias against genetic engineering and chose to show examples to the audience based off of that bias. However, they do not explicitly state their views, therefore allowing the audience to reach their own conclusion and viewpoint, even if they were guided by the documentary. The film includes many interviews from professionals such as academic scholars and lawyers and victims to aid in its credibility, thereby incepting ethos. The second way in which biodiversity of our seeds, our medicinal plants, our other useful species is taking place is through genetic engineering. And genetic engineering is a false promise whose high price has already been paid by the farmers of this country. Multinationals have grabbed the seed economy, which used to be a farmer's economy, it used to be a women's economy, and now are bringing unreliable, untested seeds to the market, pushing our farmers to suicide. We happen to be sitting in the middle of all the seed industry shops right here. Monsanto this side, Syngenta shops that side. The next lane is all selling seeds of suicide. Vandana Shiva is an internationally recognized physicist and ecologist who lobbies for spreading knowledge about the truths of genetic engineering. Her credentials promote the film's ethos. The filmmakers specifically use pathos to target the audience's emotions and help propel a feeling of sympathy. Yeah, these slides are very interesting here. Now this, this is an interesting slide. What, what, what you have here, in, in 1982, Dr. Ralph Brinster at the University of Pennsylvania said, what if I can take the gene responsible for growth in human beings and put it into a mouse? And he did just that. He actually was successful. And as you can see, though, the very large mouse here is the one that has successfully been engineered with human ge growth genes to make it huge and you see the sibling next to it. And it, this made a huge fear. It was on the front page of these magazines, New York Times. And then a few months later, people said, well, this is interesting, but what are you gonna really do with a really huge mouse? I mean, you can scare people, uh, you know, there's a few things you can do with it, but it's not a very practical thing to have a really huge mouse. So then what happened is uh, the United States Department of Agriculture said, well, what, what happens if we were to use the same experiment, but to use it with pigs? And uh, so I went out to the USDA in here, and this is what they did. They took the human growth gene, Dr. Vern Purcell, with taxpayer dollars, and I don't know that many taxpayers knew this, actually took taxpayer dollars and took human genes, growth genes, and put them into this pig. As you can see, there's a problem. Instead of like the mouse that with human genes that grew so big, the genes work differently. The human growth genes work differently in this pig. It was cross-eyed, a bow-legged, impotent, uh, the musculature had overwhelmed it, uh, and I could only photograph it against a plywood board here because it's the only only way it could stand up. And you can imagine the suffering and, and, and how terrible th this was for this particular animal. Life Running Out of Control uses many visual effects to aid in their presentation of the information and in their per persuasion of their views on genetic modification. The visuals help the viewers understand the rhetoric more clearly. But more importantly, the visuals are used to depict all the hazards and damages that genetic modification has caused 
mainly by using pathos. In the previous video, the documentary shows photos of different animals suffering from failures and side effects of genetic engineering. By showing pictures of innocent animals affected by these scientists simply for the purpose of research, the viewers feel empathy for those who have suffered from engine genetic engineering and begin to assume that the modification is completely responsible for all of the disasters. The film shows an area in India affected by genetically modified cotton that was said to be insect resistant. However, the crop was not, so both the farm and the farmers suffered greatly. The documentary then shows the commercial of the genetically engineered cotton to prove the point that science is not always correct. This commercial helps prove and justify their point and help persuade the viewers even further. many of these methods and materials, the filmmakers maximized their chances of influencing many people's beliefs and values. The fact that Monsanto attempted to prevent screening of the film proves how effective it is. In fact, I think the four of us can agree that this documentary definitely gave us a new perspective on genetic modification. <laughs>